Uh, a couple of recent videos, I have a dolly shot where the camera actually moves while I'm doing the work. And I thought that I would take the time in this video to show how I did that. So here's the dolly. It's pretty basic. It's just a piece of plywood with rollerblade wheels on there. I went and bought a pair of used rollerblades, stripped the wheels off and put them on here. Uh, the distinction with this one is that you can steer it. It'll actually turn in an arc when you turn those wheels. I added this articulated arm here to lift the camera up above the surface there to any height that I want as far as the arm reaches that is. It's pretty basic also. I've got more details on that in the article on my website. Now there are a couple of different ways to pull the dolly along. One, the simplest way, although it's probably not very simple because you have to try to rig up something to slow it down, and that would be gravity just to allow the dolly to run back over a sloped piece of wood. What I did, I used a windshield wiper motor that I bought from a surf store. I think it was like five bucks. And it is connected to this small 12 volt battery. And to get two different speeds, which I'm going to demonstrate in a second, I've got a couple of switches up here to change that. The dolly is about halfway over and I stopped it during the first shot. So I'm going to continue the pulling it. I just, I don't have a switch for turning it off and on. I've got these plugs that fit right on the terminals of the battery. Uh, I want to be able to pull them right off so I can charge the battery. And this will be the slow speed. And you can see the motion in the camera. Now full speed is like that. Or no, that's not full speed. I think that was actually the second speed. I just finished building this, so I'm not quite sure. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse it so it actually goes downhill. And you do that by switching the leads. And now, so the camera will be going backwards. And that's actually full speed right there. So as you can hear, the thing does make a little bit of noise, but it's not really that bad. It's The thing is, I can get it pretty far away from the action with a long string. As you can see, this is about, oh, about 16 feet away. And I've tried it outdoors. I did one shot with it outdoors, and it, you couldn't even hear it at all then. Now, as you can see, it doesn't need to be on a track. It rolls on any smooth surface. Now, one issue that I have with that motor is that it's a little bit jerky. It seems to pull and then kind of stall a little bit and pull and stall. And it's not really due to the resistor arrangement at all. It seems to be something with the motor. It's not really noticeable in the shot, especially if you break up the shot a little bit, but it works well. And it certainly adds a new dimension to what I can do. So that's basically it. I hope that it was informative for some people. Like I said, there's more detail on the website article that I wrote to go along with this. There's a lot of details that I can't cover in a video, like how I did certain things. And it also shows the first thing that I used to pull it. That was actually a cordless drill that was pushed in part of the way, and that worked well. So you don't have to buy any parts. If you have like a cordless drill, you could do it. Since I have all four of my cameras out here, I thought I would do a quick side-by-side -side comparison between all four. This one you're seeing right now is the Canon uh, HF G30. It's my latest camera, the one I use mostly now. This is the camera that I was using right before I got the new one, and that's the Canon HF M50, I do believe. This is the first camera that I had for a video, and that's the Nikon S8100 Coolpix. Okay, the last one is my Nikon D5100. I mainly bought that to take still pictures. Um, I had an older D40 that I used to use a lot, and then I dropped it, and the flash broke, and 
I saw this one on sale, so I bought it. I also wanted to try video with a DSLR. And I can tell you that it's something that I really don't like because there's just too much messing around. Now, obviously, there's some things that you can do better with a DSLR that you can't do with a, a video camera. But for me, I don't think that they're, they're worth the extra trouble for every shot that you have to go through for a DSLR. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.